So a couple of days ago, I did a list of the top 15 free agents and where I think they're going to sign. But today I wanna to change things up. We're gonna do a top 10 list of players that I think should be traded or could be traded this off season and which teams could benefit from them the most. Without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. At number 10, I have Lane Thomas going to the Houston Astros. Lane Thomas is a right fielder for the Washington Nationals with a plus arm, good defense, and he crushes lefties. The reason I think the Astros need him is because the Astros need a left fielder. They've got Chaz McCormick in center and they've got Kyle Tucker in right and they're strong defensively there. If you put Lane Thomas in left, that just makes your whole outfield better. And again, that keeps Jordan Alvarez in the DH role, which might be the most important part of this trade. Jordan Alvarez is one of the best hitters in baseball. He's the best postseason hitter in baseball and keeping him off his feet is a big deal. And if you're adding a plus bat that crushes lefties, and plays defense well, I think it's a good trade. At number nine, I have Jonathan India going to the Seattle Mariners. Jonathan India is a second baseman for the Cincinnati Reds, but as of right now, he really doesn't have a position because they had such an influx of young talent come up last year in 2023. And that's the reason they might look to trade him. There's a lot of rumors going around about it, and I do think it's gonna happen. I think the perfect team is, again, the Seattle Mariners. A team that needs offense, they need a second baseman, is easily the worst spot on their team. And also the Mariners have pitching for days and the Reds they need pitching I think these two teams make perfect trade partners and I want to see this happen so Jonathan India to the Seattle Mariners at number eight and easily one of my favorite picks on this entire list is Alex Verdugo being traded to the Toronto Blue Jays yeah I know it's interdivisional but hey guess what the Blue Jays they need a stick in that lineup they need another lefty because Kevin Kiermeyer's probably not coming back in free agency and Alex Verdugo could easily take his place and imagine having this as your one through four in the top of that lineup being George Spring Alex Verdugo, Bo Bichette, and Vladdy Jr. I just love the way this sounds. I love the way it looks. And Alex Verdugo is an on-base machine. The perfect hitter to put in front of Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And the reason I think that Boston would trade Alex Verdugo is because Alex Verdugo is going to be a free agent after 2024. And I think the Boston Red Sox are going to have a lot of money already invested into one pitcher from Japan. I don't think they're going to be willing to spend even more money bringing Alex Verdugo back. But that's just my hot take of the video. Let me know if you agree. At number seven, I have the second baseman of the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, utility man, Brendan Donovan. I think Brendan Donovan's gonna be traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers in exchange for some much needed young pitching in that rotation for the Cardinals. I've said this in many videos, the Cardinals have to do anything they can to get starting pitching. And well, a trade with the Dodgers would be a good step in that direction. And the Dodgers really need a guy like Brendan Donovan to come in and play mostly second base. Mookie can take his gold glove and go back to right field. And then that gives the Dodgers a player that can play every position besides center field and catcher. He plays everywhere else. And you know the Dodgers, they love players that are versatile, that can just play anywhere. Well, Brendan Donovan's a perfect fit, and I think this trade is perfect for both teams. So let's see if it happens. Oh, please, Santa, it's all I want for Christmas. At number six, I have Anthony Santander going to the Cleveland Guardians. Yes, the Cleveland Guardians, they need offense in any way possible. Santander can play right field, left field. He can play some first base or even DH, of course. But he brings a ton of power to the plate, and the Cleveland Guardians have nobody with power. I mean, other than like Josh Naylor, and Jose Ramirez, there's not a lot of power on this team. And the Guardians, they've always been a pitching factory, so they can send a pitcher, maybe two, some lower level guys, whatever it is, to the Baltimore Orioles and get them an offensive beast back in that lineup, a run producer, someone to protect Jose Ramirez. He's only got one more year till free agency, but I don't see Santander getting a lot of money in free agency, like somewhere around 15 million to 18 million a year. I think the Guardians could pay that easily. And we know the Baltimore Orioles are not gonna bring Santander back in free agency, because they have so many young prospects. I mean, they still have Heston Kierstad coming up. He's going to have to play somewhere. You move Santander to the Cleveland Guardians, you can put Kierstad in right. And if you're the Orioles and you're not going to bring him back in free agency, you might as well trade him now where he's got a really, really good value. I mean, they could get an impact starter for their rotation right now. That would be huge. At number five, I have Pete Alonzo, the first baseman for the New York Mets. Yes, I do think the Mets will entertain trading Pete Alonzo, and I think the perfect fit for him is the Boston Red. Red Sox. And you may be like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. They've got Tristan Casas. Yes, but they still do have a DH spot to fill. Justin Turner probably won't come back in free agency. And look, Tristan Casas is an on-base machine. He walks a ton, but Pete Alonso is a completely different player, especially when you think about him being a right-handed hitter and that big thing called the green monster that he's going to hit like 50 home runs over every year. I think he is just the perfect hitter for Boston. And I would just love to see him like literally destroy the green monster in a year. He would probably 
probably hit a ball through it. At number four, I have Shane Bieber going to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, this would be a great rotation. Zach Gallen, Shane Bieber, Merrill Kelly. And if you haven't seen my latest video, I predicted that Trevor Bauer would sign in free agency with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Man, if they made both of these moves, it'd be like my favorite rotation in baseball. I don't know what you think, but I think it'd be just awesome. But back to reality here. Yes, the Cleveland Guardians, like I've mentioned before in this video, they need more offense. And the Diamondbacks have a guy like Alec Thomas or Jake McCarthy that would make a lot of sense in this trade. I don't know exactly what the Guardians would be looking to get back, but I think it would be a good place to start. So Shane Bieber, go to the Arizona Diamondbacks and get a ring. You might actually make some money there too. At number three, I have Corbin Burns going to the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, the Atlanta Braves are looking for starting pitching on the free agent market and within the trade market. And if they go and get Corbin Burns to be their ace in the postseason, my goodness, this is going to be the best team I've seen in my lifetime. But the Braves have a guy like Vaughn Grissom that they could send to Milwaukee that would very much help this deal get done. Because Milwaukee, while they have Willie Adamas right now, he will be a free agent after the 2024 season. Vaughn Grissom could come in and fill that role and actually get the playing time that he deserves. But again, like if Corbin Burns goes to the Atlanta Braves in a trade, it's just going to be, I, I just don't even know how to put into words what the Braves are. Like they're not even a baseball team anymore. They're just like a team of superheroes. We might as well just call them the Justice League. All right. And at number two, I'm going with Juan Soto because I do think there's another guy that's actually better than Juan Soto for just one reason. But I believe Juan Soto is going to be traded to the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs need a face of that franchise. Dansby Swanson is not really the guy to be the face of your franchise. Soto, on the other hand, can come in, hit 30 or 40 home runs a year, have an on-base percentage of like 350 or higher. And it's just the name. It's Juan Soto. The Cubs want to be relevant. The Cubs paid $80 million for a manager for their rival, the Brewers manager. Go out and trade for Soto now. I don't understand why you wouldn't. But I think the Cubs being a big market team, they want to be in the postseason. They play in a fairly easy division to win, especially now that Craig Council's not with the Brewers. I don't think the Brewers are going to be that good of a team anymore. I think he really did mean a lot to that franchise. And it's the fact that Craig Council came to the Cubs. It's going to make the Cubs a better team. So go out, get your three hole hitter for the next like 15 years, get him extended and let's move on. And we are going to move on to the number one spot, which is Mike Trout getting traded to the Philadelphia Phillies. I know Mike Trout has a lot of money attached to his name. I get that. He's got a lot of money attached to him. But if the Phillies are willing to give up better prospects, the Angels might eat a lot of that money off of Trout's contract, just like you saw the Mets do with Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. And if that is possible that the Angels will do it, Mike Trout makes perfect sense for the Phillies. He can go and play center field. Bryce Harper's moving to first base full time. So so they could even put Trout in right field. He's a good defender. If he stays healthy, he's one of the best players, probably the second best player in baseball right behind Shohei Otani. Again, that's my opinion. But Trout grew up around Philadelphia. Bryce Harper's already tried to talk Trout into coming to Philadelphia before he signed that huge extension with the Angels. I mean, there's a lot of connections between Mike Trout and Philadelphia. His favorite football team is the Philadelphia Eagles. Like I said, it just makes a lot of sense for Mike Trout as a person and for the Phillies as an organization and also for the Angels because they could get better prospects back if they'll just pay down some of that contract. Yes, I know Trout's kind of injury prone lately, but I promise you if you bring him onto the Phillies and you sell Mike Trout Philadelphia Philly jerseys, you're going to make your money's worth off of him easily. And guys, the most important reasoning out of all of this is Mike Trout will finally be playing in the postseason. I just want him to get traded to a team that will make the postseason, and we all know the Phillies are going to make the postseason. But that's all I've got for today. That's my top 10 trade candidates for 2023. And I'd like to know if you agree or disagree. Did one of your favorite players get traded? Did one of your teams lose a good player or gain a good player? I'd love to know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button or maybe subscribe as it really helps out my channel and lets YouTube know to push my content onto new viewers. Either way, guys, peace. I love you. I'll see you in the next one.